We've been learning about the actus reus, or act requirement. Criminal liability can be visited only upon an actor, that is, someone who has performed a voluntary action. The requirement that the prosecution prove a voluntary act was critical in the Martin case, and it comes up again in the case of People v. Newton. Huey Newton was charged with murder, and the jury convicted him of voluntary manslaughter. On appeal, Newton claims that the trial court erred in refusing to instruct the jury that unconsciousness is a complete defense. The appellate court agreed. There was testimony from which the jury could have inferred that Newton was unconscious at the moment he fired the fatal shots. The appellate court reversed Newton's conviction on the ground that it was error not to charge the jury that unconsciousness can negate the voluntariness of Newton's firing shots. A California statute provided the legal authority for the court's holding. It states, All persons are capable of committing crimes except those belonging to the following classes. We get down to number five. Persons who committed the act charged without being conscious thereof. Without being conscious. Suppose this provision was not in the statute. Would that have changed the outcome? Or would the Newton court have read it in the same way the Martin court read the word voluntary into the Alabama statute? The actus reus requirement has long been understood to disqualify certain things as voluntary acts, even though the power that moved the actor's limbs originated within him. The generally received doctrine is summarized in the model penal code. A person is not guilty of an offense unless his liability is based on conduct which includes a voluntary act. The terms act and voluntary are given specific definitions. Act or action means a bodily movement, whether voluntary or involuntary. The terms act and action are neutral. They refer to any movement of the body. Liability, however, attaches only to conduct that includes a voluntary act. Conduct that consists entirely of involuntary acts cannot justify criminal punishment. We can be punished only for what we do. We cannot be punished for what merely happens to us or is done to us or for what we are. What does voluntary mean? Voluntary has the meaning specified in section 2.01. Well, let's turn to section 2.01. By the way, don't worry about memorizing section numbers. The following are not voluntary acts. The Model Penal Code backs into its definition of voluntary act by listing examples of bodily movements that do not count as voluntary. A reflex or convulsion, like a sneeze or a spasm, is a bodily movement but it is not a voluntary act. This guy had better have an excuse for not wearing his mask. A bodily movement during unconsciousness or sleep is not a voluntary act. A bodily movement conducted during Hypnosis is not a voluntary act. Ah, so those are examples of acts that are not voluntary, but we still want to know what does make an act a voluntary act. The Model Penal Code tells us that a voluntary act is a bodily movement that is a product of the effort or determination of the actor, either conscious or or habitual. An act is voluntary only if it is consciously produced by the actor's will. 
So the model penal code would have led to a reversal in Newton even if there were no special statutory provision about unconsciousness. The model penal code, for the most part, is an effort to restate criminal law doctrine, much in the way that the restatement of torts or of contracts tries, for the most part, simply to synthesize developments in case law across the multiplicity of American jurisdictions. But the model penal code sometimes goes farther and proposes to fill gaps where there is no settled doctrine. And sometimes the model penal code goes even further and proposes reforms that depart from settled doctrine or resolve one way or another disparities across different jurisdictions. The model penal code has no authority proprio vigore, as lawyers say. It has no force of its own. It is, at best, persuasive authority, except where a legislature has adopted its language. No jurisdiction has adopted it wholesale. We look to the model penal code because courts do when they need guidance. The fact is, the doctrines of the criminal law would be difficult to make coherent sense of without the model penal code to guide us.